Well, hello there, YouTube. We have got another mod for the old Road King. Look at that. Some progressive suspension 944 shocks. These bad boys. These are 13 inch. There's 12 that comes on the bike. And these are uh, 13 inch shocks that have a one inch compensator. It's a kind of a softly wound uh, <laughs> a washer underneath the bump stop. But um, anyway, it's a softly wound uh, spring in here that basically the weight of the bike is enough to collapse the shock one inch. So the bike will ride as if it's a um, or its right height will look like it's a 12 inch shock but you're actually running with a 13 inch shock because even though it collapses that one inch that's still still there for you know um, a rebound and uh, what I've read on them these are supposed to be pretty dang nice for the price so uh, I'm not gonna bore you with jacking the thing up I'm gonna jack it up in a and uh, knock the saddlebags off and uh, I'll come right back we'll put some some 944s on the on the road king so I'll be right back okay so these are 13 inch 944s just give you an idea this is the one the one shock that adjusts and it's it hydraulically adjusts the uh, spring pressure it's got a hydraulic sleeve in here that compresses the spring very very sensitive shock very sensitive but you can see you know she's only got about inch and a half it's probably got two inches with the bump stop and uh, of course the bump stop on this thing is sitting way up on the shaft but you can see you know going eye to eye this is an inch inch taller shock but because of the rack and stuff um, this bulge here gets in the way which it kinda I'm wondering I'm gonna have to compare it to this shock I wonder if I can't get away with them being up there but I guess the accessories the way they hook in behind the shock hits this and a uh, progressive actually tells you to to mount them upside down so uh, we'll take a we'll take a look at that and see what that looks like so anyway I don't know if this socket it looks like a three fourths, but I think the, the shaft gets in the way. Yeah, it does kind of. I may need to uh, dig in my box here and get a quarter inch. Oh, probably got one right here. Quarter inch or 19 millimeter. 19 is the same as a three fourths. So we'll just sneak in here this way. And I, I have the jack set so it's just taking a little pressure off of it. And so you want to you wanna take the bottom off first because uh, if you take the top off first, the shock will flounder about. That thing does not have any Loctite on it. There's no way that has Loctite as loose as that feels. But, you know, these these things... You know, Harley's always been one of these that's kind of big on Loctiting everything. It's these things don't fall apart like like the old days. I like a shaking shit apart on them. I just want to be careful I don't let something slip and bang my exhaust down there. Yeah, there's no Loctite on those at all. Harley did not put any Loctite on them. So I don't know. I haven't even looked at the instructions. But I wanted to pull this one off first to show you how <laughs> I talked in a vlog about a guy that talks about why he doesn't like air shocks because when you're in a turn, the shocks load <laughs> and it pushes the air from one shock to the other. That swing arm ain't moving. Both shocks are going at the same time. But look at the difference between the right and left shock. So that throws his uh, misguided theory a thousand miles out the window. This is just this is nothing more than a than a damper. 
and this spring is essentially a compensating spring just like the like the other one I mean I think soft enough I can probably yeah, I can almost pull it off the ring by hand this is where all the power is at so essentially for all practical purposes it's a single sided shock that's a beefy swing arm crazy beefy so and I just want to show you that right quick yeah, just set this one off to the side here right quick good my wrench wherever I set her oh yeah knock this side off we're obviously gonna have to to adjust the uh, the jack here because the shocks are longer the new ones are I might have just a little maybe just a little too much Let's see if that loosens it or makes it stiffer Side load on these bolts while I'm taking them out. And I wish there is. Is she trying to go down or up? You see, I'm not up high enough. I thought that got easier as I lifted. I don't want to burr the the start of those threads. You know, it's the last thing we need is have to fight with that. Because you know, if the weight of the bike was laying on there, it could you know, gum up, burr up that first uh, thread. Once you get them started sideways, if you're not careful, you can muck things up. Anyway, these are the the premium shocks from Harley Davidson that that this, that's unique to the Street Glide Special. That is one highly adjustable shock. I can tell you that look at that even though it doesn't say it on there that is a Showa sticker you know who owns Showa oh it says right there Showa you can see that the Showa you know who owns Showa Honda owns Showa that is a Honda company so uh, give me a second and uh, let me read the instructions here right quick and uh, see so uh, get my ducks in a row here and um, the mod, well, that's actually not the, the part number, it's different. It's uh, these are 944-4002UT. It's Ultra Tour um, standard spring rate. If you want the heavy duties, it's 4020 instead of 4002. But I'm not, I'm heavy duty springs are always way too much. There it is in attachable accessories, which is that utilize the top shock mount. You must install these progressive suspension shocks with a rod end up spring adjust adjuster at the bottom. Yeah. So I thought I heard something about that. So the shocks will be going on upside down. Just like it is in the picture. Exactly like that. Because the accessory, when it slides on, the, the bottom the bottom hook of the accessory will hit the hit the shock so there we are so uh let me let me dig through my instructions here right quick and i mean this is nothing it takes nothing to put these on so um anyway i need to grab the thread lock too so i will put some on so anyway we'll be back here in a moment oh i got this camera pointing right away. i didn't hook it up to the phone or nothing i just kind of threw it on <laughs> so we'll be right back we'll see ya Okay, so let's put the put the first shock on here. So what they want, and you know they're not saying not to use them, but they're not saying to use them. Let's we'll see what this thing adds up to. Adds up to be here. I'll have the part number facing inside. So they want their washer. Uh, the lock washer is what I have in question. Oh shit! Please don't tell me these are. I don't know. Let's say please don't tell me these are are press in style. I've had some that that were. 
Ooh, that looks really tight down here on the bottom. Oh, baby. There you are. So we'll see what kind of length we, we have here. Because there may be a reason why... Oh, yeah, she's going there nice and deep. So we'll put a little thread locker on this thing. And put a little dab. Whoa, that was like too much of a dab. Just a little skosh on here. Thread lock goes a long ways, you'd be surprised. So we want it upside down. So we're going to go this side. lots of thread going in there all right so as you can see we're way too short now let's just get some, some height going here and we'll just temporarily stick this in here as a as my guide to where I'm at in the world and go slower right there all right so one of their washers just a just a dab inside here this permatex thread locker is very watery initially I gotta use a little caution with it not to go too crazy but, you know, I've used it, I'm a huge Loctite fan, but uh, this was all that was available locally when I needed it one day, and uh, I've been using it quite a bit. It's just a medium strength. So we don't want to get everything crazy tight here just yet. These are stock washers. Swing over here. Throw the other side on right quick. Uh, rinse and repeat. Let's go ahead and take these off. Yeah, I'll stick these. There was a little bag somewhere. I don't know what I've done with it. I'll just set that right there. And you know, as always, you want to. Take a look at them, make sure nothing's mucked up anywhere before you mount them and then go, oh, I didn't notice until a month later that I had a big gouge or something was wrong. If you're wondering how I'm deciding which side to go in and out with the bike, just put all the part numbers and everything on the inside. Plus, the pretty progressive sticker sticks out, although <laughs> it's uh, obviously upside down, which doesn't matter because uh, the bags completely cover the shocks. It would be sad to have some real fancy, beautiful shocks that you want to look at a lot because you're not going to see them. They're going to get buried by the bags, like the Olin shocks, which I'm a... Uh, Huge fan. Geez, look at the size of that caliper on that thing. Which I'm a huge fan of. But good lord, they're expensive. Maybe it's some maybe it's some later date, but you know, I just I just made the first payment on this thing. <laughs> and so let's, let's keep things going one step at a time here, shall we? So I'll put a little little shot on the inside there. Snug this side down. Nifty cheesy torque wrench. The spec on the shock bolts is uh, um, 35 to 40. I'm just doing 37. There's no specific order in which you need to do these.
There you are. There's a set of progressive shocks installed. So, if you watch this compensator, let's go, let's lift it back off. Okay. That's, you know, basically, there's no weight on it. But watch, watch how far this, this shock spring will fall into this cut as it compresses the compensator spring. That's just the weight of the bike. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to boost these things up a little bit. That's way too much sag. It actually sunk some of the spring down as well. So we'll do some we'll do some measuring here and and see uh oh I don't need to slide the jack out yet. So we'll measure our, our free length and uh and uh, we'll set, I know that it's uh, three and five eighths, I think is the total travel of the shock. So we'll, uh, we'll set, we'll set at one third, which is typical of the throw. So initially we'll just, uh, I'll just go for, you know, a full, you know, let's just, well, we'll just start with an inch, but an inch is what the compensator is going to, going to drop, so. Alright. So anyway, all you do is you just find a good place to, and a good reference to measure by. Handy dandy, some of my dad's old things that we found in his van we bought that van from him years ago and then finally got to a point we we're gonna toss it and and uh we found all kinds of stuff in the van see so one pretty pretty straight and reliable see that little bulge right there yeah I don't see something overly reliable how about right there on that well I need to be able to see it. Is that a sharp edge or no? That's a rolled turn there. I might be able to. I just need a, a good reliable. Can I go this far out? I guess I could, but I'm on the wrong side. I'm on the metric side. That's right at, I mean, exactly ten and a half inches right there. Make sure we got a good. Yeah, exactly ten and a half. That'd be pretty easy. It's just on the edge of that that wire clip there. Now the tricky thing is, is to do this by yourself. I just want to see what what the static static sag is on it. Bounce here a little bit. Of course I got the jack over there where I or the tape measure where I can't get to it. Alright. I still kinda have the the jack there as <laughs> as a little safety. Yeah see I'm not gonna be able to Hold the hold the tape measure in the spot where I had it. Cause I had it slightly slightly bowed. Hmm. Yeah, that's nine. That's nine and and a quarter. That's this is just absolutely a rough guess. Yeah, I wish I could get my hand in there. I should have used. The axle there for that, huh? I'm not showing about nine and a half. So that's an inch of static. You can, you know, well, you can use the eye to eye of the shock, but, you know, the shock is, is laying sideways. So I guess if you were going, 
I guess, you know, the shocks travel. Six and one half dozen the other. The shock's gonna make a path. I should probably... Oh, jeez. Um, God, the easiest would be to measure from the edge of the cup to the cup. But that'll be... Uh... As you make adjustments, the cup's gonna move. See, that's kind of hard to... I need a more reliable source here. How about right on the bump of that shock? To... There. Because I can actually turn around while I'm sitting on the bike and figure that out. Yeah. I'll drag it back up and do that. But anyway, all I'm going to do now is just set the, the sag in them. And, um with me sitting on it and uh, take her for a ride and see what I think so uh, there you are some 944s installed on a street glide special so appreciate you guys hanging around and I need to do this quick and go for a ride before it gets too dark clouds are coming in it's supposed to rain for the next 10 days so I need to do this quick so I'm gonna let you guys go for now we'll talk to you later now bye bye Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye-bye. Hello there, YouTube. So th this is my first test of the uh, Progressive 944. Standard rate springs, 13-inch. Um, initially, I don't feel like I'm any any softer I have no I have no idea I did a quick uh, um, suspension sag thing of course it dropped the inch but it uh, looked like it dropped a little bit more so I you know, it was hard for me I, I needed my wife there or somebody to measure for me I I couldn't turn around and see the tape with me sitting on it so I just gave the pre-run uh, the springs one uh, one turn of of a uh, spring tension. There's lines or something in there, but I can't see the damn thing. So I just took a little sharpie, put one little dot, and uh, just made one full turn. Uh, I'm, I may be too soft or too hard. I have no idea. But I'm gonna take you down. I've taken you through here before, but this is my version of of Hooker Dimper Hooker Dimple Hill. Oh my God! I'm losing my my voice in my mind all in one shot. But it looks like the sun's setting much earlier than what it is. It's still up there a good ways, but the rain clouds are kicking in, and you know how it is around here. Once uh once it kicks behind a cloud or a mountain, it's uh it's essentially sunset at that point. So I noticed on the uh, Electra Glide. Um, Ultra Limited actually I let me take that back because I did not notice I noticed what he noticed after he pointed it out but a nice viewer mentioned that when I drove in the shop ooh, the lights brightened up on the on the dash well I hope mine do that because I all but can't see them suckers right now I just see the lightest glow of darkness so they must do it get into something dark enough that maybe they'll kick and we'll see see what it does but that was really cool on that ultra I don't think these do that so we'll see how this thing handles this road this thing's just straight up ugly see a little rabbit zip across the road there for some reason I almost feel like I'm squatted more than what I was because I got off of that spider that has a different stance. But listen, already, already you're not here. Not g -g 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 in my that shaking in my voice. <laughs> but we haven't hit the full Hooker Dimple Road yet either. Yeah, it's a pretty weird sensation to jump off of that spider and jump onto this. I feel like I'm sitting really low to the ground. This is 
not exactly the smoothest road right through here. I know driving through here, you're getting a lot of shake in my voice even with that. So I think maybe our initial test may be good. I do need to check that sag though with, uh, with my full weight on it get an idea of, of where I'm at. I don't want to be halfway or something like that, which I, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but I could be. I think it's got, was it 12 or 20 turns? There's a, a huge amount of adjustment in these things. And I, you know, I may have them just way soft and, that, and, that, and my sensation of being squatted is more than just a sensation get out here and uh, this thing, this road gets pretty rough towards the end, but all, already, already a, a marked improvement, I mean, no question, this is, this is not super smooth through here by no means, it's not rough, but the rough's coming, but even on something like this, you're getting that shake in my voice, and a couple of bumps I've hit here so far, it seems to absorb them nicely maybe these higher end shocks don't require as much um, break in kind of freaked me out uh, there's like a just a burst of brightness there and I thought the whole dash and everything ooh, look at all that gravel the whole dash and everything lit up I don't think that's a third gear roll out there didn't I pass that guy somewhere already today I swear it was a guy that looked just like him but that compensator spring the little small one is up in the cup that uh what that does is just it's a pre-built one inch of sag in it which uh which should be enough but uh it looked like i was getting a, a little additional and i mean i couldn't uh, i was gonna i was gonna end up dropping the bike before i i got a good look at that tape measure you have to rig me up a something here to sort all that out Put a rig up a laser on a tripod and get a reference that way as well now this is where it's hell or rough if it survives this I am one happy camper I'm just telling you right now the difference the difference is phenomenal I've ridden through this road probably five or six times on this thing and uh it's damn near like riding my Sportster through here. She's uh, she's noticeably stiff, I'd say initially, but uh, nothing nothing harsh. It's not really making my voice jiggle that much. I, I just I have the sensation of being squatted, and I I'm sure it's just jumping off of that spider after driving all the way home. But the worst part of this thing is this last, last little straightaway. It can, uh, there's some rough spots right through here by this, this uh, second clump of trees here to the right. Something's coming across the road there. What is that? Looks like a little dog. It is. It's like a little chihuahua dog. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, she's, she's good and rough right through here. Open it up nice. No bottoming out. It's, it's hell for hell for rough right there though. <laughs> but still, I mean there's hardly any shake in my voice. I'm liking this. When I make this right hand turn, this is a, this is the roughest spot. There's a couple of walloping waves in the road. Yeah, there's one of the kickers right there. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Take 
taking it at 60 and she's just floating right through it. I can hear a little shake in my voice, but this is rough. I mean, really rough. That's the young kid there. They can do anything. odor that I smelt when I passed by that's that's pretty bad well let's not just throw this uh, evening light away let's let's go bomb out here a little bit let's let's play a little come along with me will you so one turn in but I am curious if uh, if I'm if I'm getting cuz I just need to make sure I don't have too much, uh, too much sag in there. I, I think I'm, think I might have a little too much. Oh, I forgot they took them cedar trees down. Now this is a pretty good spot right through here for deer to jump across. Oh, you know what? If I could see where my headlight was not dark enough to see it I know that my headlight sets a little a little low and I haven't adjusted it up if it's uh, if it's not still low then I know uh, I'm off here a little bit yeah, was, yeah now I can see it here a little bit and wave around There's some pretty good holes in here too that'll surprise you Oh yeah, like right there. Oh yeah, I'd handle that, no problem. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's some good ones right there. She's just soaking it up. There's no bottoming out. I think I I think I might have touched a bump stop there on that one though. That was that's a pretty good one. But man, overall the difference is huge. Man, it's like the suspension is not short at all. It's like it's just normal, normal shocks back there. And the 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 trick of the whole thing is, is it's actually riding like it's lowered. cool idea putting that happening so it's just like a built-in one inch of sag right out of the gate ah, that's rough right there but it handled it smoothly there's a deer sitting on that little dirt road down there yeah that was a sharp impact bump there that one might have touched the bump stop, but no, no distinct bottoming out though at all yet. And she, uh, the rebound dampening seems to be really nice. It's not, not too quick. It's not spring me in the air or anything weird like that. sunglasses on so it probably looks darker out here than what it really is Let's see if the ladies out here doing her, her lawn work again today <laughs> got her sprinklers going ah, she's been out there we got the old sprinklers uh, wrapping along there There's a deer right there. See? Right here in front of me. Right here. Right here. There you are. Ooh! That's 
the one. What was I riding when I was talking about that huge bump? Maybe I was riding this. You know, it's weird. It sounds like like one of my my backrests or something just settled in. Or, you know, it could be the uh, shock bolts. Because I put a little tension on them, you know, to kind of... Because if, if you tighten them down with everything extended, you know, the bolts don't... They're not like a precise fit through the eyelet. So if you tighten everything down with the suspension unloaded, at some point you're going to hear like a pop sound because it's going to settle. It's going to want to settle with the weight of the bike, so that's why I, I put some some weight on it before I tightened and torqued everything down. Which reminds me, I left that torque wrench sitting at 37 foot-pounds, too. You're not supposed to leave those things sprung. This is a good place for deer out here as well. where my sag is set it is nice to actually have sag so that you know when you go across a hole the suspension actually has something to react to <laughs> those uh, Harley shocks are, are just no sag the only sag is when you when you hit bumps and uh, they, they never made the bike do anything weird it just over stuff that shouldn't be rough transition uh, in, into into your butt when you're going down the road like little ripples in the freeway would just go whoa, 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 just shake the hell out of you that was like a little ice cream cup looks like them old ice cream cups from you know when the old ice cream truck used to come by some multicolored like a red white and blue colored thing that I keep every time I come out this way it's always like a, a thread of rain there's some serious clouds there that's usually the front side of uh, an approaching storm oh no some like a yogurt or something it was red white and blue though That little squall right there, that right there could have some rain in it. In fact, it almost looks like there is some rain in that. Wow, it's beautiful though, I gotta give it that. Jesus, gorgeous. Oh, look at all the bugs on the shield already. It will be weird to have some rain. It, it is been so long since the last time I seen any rain I you know it actually didn't rain but it was like really quick and was over but I mean we haven't had a rain where things got wet let's put it that way but yeah it's been months we broke all kinds of records for a number of days with no measurable precipitation and things of that nature to really pay attention to what I'm doing here. Some deer do like to just sneak out on you. Yeah, this is crazy nice ride. Now the thing feels like a regular motorcycle. You know, there's when you squat something down, there's always a suspension sacrifice. I mean, that all looks cool and whatever. But, uh, it doesn't it doesn't need to be that way you know or uh, I don't I don't think it's necessary to be squatted down that much now there can be some gravel in this turn down here sometimes and it's a little too dark to see wow that is a big bump a little popping there uh-huh
never know, she might sneak back out. One of the things they like is people with gardens and stuff too, so. on this thing but I always end up making these crazy crazy long vlogs and I know I need to cut them up so I, I just kind of don't even look at them I get brave every once in a while and stick one up those 40 plus minute ones I guess I could just be brave and just start putting them up and see what you guys think but I don't want it to be my MO to have you know the 45 minute vlog there's no way I have that much interesting or anything interesting to last 45 minutes but I don't know what that that sharp bump I, I think that might have been a bottom out right there God about that sucker that'll seat mount you on the iron it'll use up them them progressive shocks in a hurry over that but the occasional bottom out is normal suspension you know and it's not not often you're gonna be riding on roads this rough I mean this thing's just got some big old rolling dips in it some of them like that one back there some of them are quite sharp You know, when I was going through looking at all the suspension stuff, you know, there's a lot of guys that are putting the cartridge, drop-in cartridge and stuff like that in these things and doing all kinds of fork mods. I, you know, I just don't, uh, as of yet anyway, I don't see anything I need to do to these forks. They're not, they're not as bouncy as, as they are on the Ultra Glide, but, you know, you're talking a heavier motorcycle too. sitting is just killing me to know but scary in these areas with deer is the deer can be sitting on the other side of the guardrail and they'll pounce over the side they feel trapped so they go for an open area to do a quick escape to a place to hide or whatever but look at all the deer out there Look at them, four of them. Man, that is that is gorgeous with them sitting, sitting in that in that golden field like that. Man, that is gorgeous. I'll leave you guys alone. see it but there's St. Helens and a full moon or almost a full moon sitting right above the mountain that's pretty dang cool right there wow it's cooled off nicely it's 79 now that that feels pretty dang good
like rain looking out towards the coast. Wow, that was like a little cool rush of air, but oddly enough, I looked out, oh, it went to 80 for a second there and switched back to 79. Yeah, so obviously the street glide doesn't have that really cool brightness that comes on so anyway this is just the last down the highway spot here oh man are those skies gorgeous holy moly that's beautiful wow well, anyway I'm just going to bomb down the highway head back to the hacienda and uh do a quick uh, sag measurement there with the help of my little wifey and um, I'll call it a night I'll look at what video I did today I'm really disappointed my dash doesn't light up like it does on the ultra I really like the dash the black dashes with a white lit up area behind there but anyway that's a whole nother story I'll chit chat with you guys later on. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care now. Thanks for hanging out with my little suspension thing here. So uh, we'll chit chat with you later. We'll see you now. Bye bye.